Modern composite materials are much easier to work with, especially because they provide much deeper depths of cure and shorter curing times. In this context, a material such as the latest composite from Densply, Quicksphere, enables us to fill deep steric cavities as well as we will see in this clinical case. It is the ideal material for replacement of large old amalgams. This patient exhibits active caries and has several fillings as well as a primary caries lesion onto fives in the lower jaw. The old amalgam in tooth six is also defective and the composite in tooth seven is unsatisfactory, therefore both will need replacement. We can see here an occlusal view of the different fillings with, in particular, the discoloration caused by the corrosion of the amalgam. The X-ray shows a large distal caries decay on the premolar. This means we will have to remove the decayed dental tissue with care. After having performed the anesthesium, the rubbed dam is put in place by setting a clamp on the last molar, tooth 7. It allows to pull the rubber dam material correctly and thus helps to create an acceptable free space for the restorative work. Firstly, we clean all dental surfaces using the nuproprophylaxis paste to eliminate any residue or deposit on the teeth and we carefully wash it out afterwards. The rotary instruments can be divided into three groups. Two 830 type burrs, it is pear shaped, used to shape the cavities here in the front. In the background, the ball burrs mounted on blue ring contra angle hand pieces for excavating carious lesions. Four red ring finishing instruments designed for finishing composites. The first stage consist of removing the old amalgam. We proceed in small steps using a lot of spray to avoid any other heating. Here you can see the amalgam is removed. In the same way, we remove the composite filling from to 7, taking care not to remove any healthy dental tissue. Here we have an occlusal view after the composite was removed. We are very cautious when we open the premola as it has a very large carious lesion. We remove the marginal crest gradually, then access the carious lesion, and then slowly open the cavity, taking care not to damage the mesial surface of the adjacent tooth. Here is a view of the cavity that has, of course, not been cleaned yet. We start by removing the lesions with a small ball burr on the mandibular teeth 6 and 7, where the secondary caries are relatively limited. We walk under spray to avoid overheating. You can now see the cavity. We select a round burr with a larger diameter to remove the caries from the premola. We work very carefully due to the proximity of the pulp chamber shown on X-ray. You see here the brown, discolored secondary dentine of the cavity. We now smooth the edges of the cervical floor of the cavity. The cavity is quite a large one, but we could preserve the natural cusps. The cavity preparations are now fully completed and we insert a paludent sectional matrix for the proximal filling of the premolar. It is easily inserted using tweezers and kept in place with a finger. The wooden wedge is forced in to hold the matrix in place at the cervical margin. This matrix is held with a finger to avoid its displacement when the wooden wedge is pushed in. 
The wedge must be placed with a certain amount of force to achieve good sealing. Here is now an occlusal view on this matrix. We will later add the rings to improve its adaptation. We will now place the adhesive. We use here Xeno3, single step self etching adhesive. Xeno3 is comprised of two bottles. We mix a drop of each project to a nice homogeneous mix and apply it only once. It is important to remember that the solvent used is a mixture of water and alcohol, which means that the material tolerates application on a slightly moist dentine. If the dentine is a little dehydrated, it is easily rehydrated by applying Xeno3 since it contains water. Applicator tips provided in the pack are designed for homogeneous mixing and easy placement of the adhesive in the cavities. The three cavities are treated simultaneously. Please note that the adhesive must penetrate the dentine structure. It must be applied on the entire cavity surface as well as on both the enamel and dentine. These applicator tips are very useful indeed because we can effectively dab the adhesive into the dentine. With the premolar, make sure that you treat the entire dentine surface, especially under the enamel undercut. The solvent is then spread using a gentle stream of air, hold far enough away to avoid thinning the adhesive layer by excessive air drying. Each cavity is then light cured. 10 seconds for each cavity is enough to polymerize the adhesive. Curing is important to achieve a good, deep polymerization of the hybrid layer within the dentine. Quicksfill Posterior Restorative, available in the practical computer tips, provides a very low shrink range rate. Its single universal shades simplifies the procedure and makes it suitable for most clinical situations. It can be injected into the cavity in a relatively thick layer since it can polymerize perfectly within 10 seconds at 4 mm thickness. We use a condenser taking care not to compress the material and form a mass that gradually liquefies to become smooth. We work with pressure on the material but never stretching or spreading it to avoid air bubbles. We now adapt the filling as it cannot be perfect at this stage here we have to restore all the occlusal cusps, bulbs and fissures. We see the buckle part first. Then we do the same for the lingual part, shaping and creating fissures. A final increment corrects a small imperfection. See how easy it is to work with this material, as it does not tear off and above all, does not stick to metal instruments. This final layer is polymerized. We now start filling the first molar. These two